So now we'll be continuing with this idea of the gravitational field strength. So in a nutshell what we talked about last time was this equation. You must not only know how to use this but you must also know how to derive this. If the examiner asks you to, to do so you must be able to do it and we went over this the last time. So what we'll be talking about now is uh, some applications of this formula but before that I also want to tell you a couple of uh, things that the examiner has asked in the past and how uh, how can you answer those questions. So sometimes the examiner makes you do some calculation and then the examiner gives you uh, this hint. Uh, basically he tells you an observation which is right in front of you which is that the gravitational field strength uh, that you may calculate is not equal to the real gravitational field strength right so the calculated value and the real values differ uh, to some extent so what could be the possible reasons for this so there are a couple of reasons for this and this is something that we also see at the earth so for example uh, if someone is interested in science they may know that at the poles the weight appears to be a bit more than what it would be at the equator right so there there are some phenomena behind this observation so one of the reasons is that the planet right for example and by planets I am just generalizing this uh, statement that I'm about to write but it would also obviously apply to the earth that the planet is not a perfect sphere right so similarly the earth is not a perfect sphere think about it you have mountains and seas so you have some uh, areas which are pointing out into the skies and some are far below so how could it be a sphere so if it is not a sphere and if you're using this equation which basically assumes it to be a point mass and hence a sphere so then the uh, actual value of gravitational field strength would not be equal to what it would uh, really be right so this uh, this is one reason which may cause this uh, basically this uh, rift between the real and the calculated value of the gravitational field strengths another value another reason is because planets uh, and obviously this still applies to the earth planets spin right so these planets spin or orbit and this also creates uh, this also causes the uh, gravitational field strength to slightly change because of the spinning action and in one of the questions that we'll do we'll actually link this with uh, the centripetal force so anyway let's just talk about this here so let's suppose that this is a planet and let's say that this is the equatorial plane let me just draw that so this is the plane of the equator right so let's say that we have a person first standing here right on the uh, right on the axis of uh, rotation and then we have the same person standing here right so what differences occur between these two positions so the basic idea is that this axis is uh, showing the direction of rotation right so in a position like this it would experience some centripetal force because this is some distance away from uh, from the axis of rotation right and it would be spinning uh, it would be moving with some speed right so here you have some centripetal force but in a position like this you really do not have any centripetal force because you are right on the axis. So think about it if you have no radius if you have no distance from uh, basically the axis of rotation there is no centripetal force acting on you. You would not even feel actually no humans feel but at this position you would not uh, be spinning at all right you would not be rotating with the earth you are completely stationary. So at the poles since you have no centripetal force acting this is really the uh, gravitational force which is also the weight right fg equals w but what happens at the equator right so if you are on the equator what difference does this make so first of all you need to uh, remember that although yes uh, the earth is pulling all massive objects in towards itself but the idea is that because of the difference of frames of reference and we talked about this very briefly in the idea of circular motion 
Like any of us sitting in a merry-go-round, we are actually being flung outwards by the earth. Right? So the centripetal force is actually acting outwards and there's this gravitational force acting inwards. So now you have this gravitational force acting inwards, the centripetal force acting outwards and obviously the normal reaction force which is actually what gives us the sensation of weight. Right? So this here uh, because we're on a, a very flat plane so we don't uh, we really say that the normal reaction force is equal to the weight right on a very uh, micro scale of things we don't even feel this difference so if you write r here or if you write w here it really doesn't make a difference so now by the equilibrium of forces here i can write that fg equals to the weight plus the centripetal force can you see the difference here so here you have no centripetal force at the pole because you're already on the axis of rotation and here you have uh, a centripetal force acting on you. Now if we simplify this, if we write Fg as, so let me just do this below. So if we talk about the pole, so if Fg is G M M upon R square, and weight is given by m g then this is a standard uh, this the standard expression that we are used to seeing for the gravitational field strength but for the equator how would this change so for the equator the idea is that fg is again gmm upon r square weight is mg and for fc you can either use mv square upon r or mr omega square really doesn't make a difference again all the m's would cancel out and g would be g m upon r square minus r omega squared right so you would have the uh, equate the gravitational field strength at equator being slightly smaller than the gravitational field strength at the pole right so i can also finally if I just add some symbols to this, I can also write this equation in the following way where I say that GE is GP minus R omega squared. This is not uh, something which is asked uh, explicitly as part of the syllabus, but this has been asked uh, repeatedly uh, in numerical questions. So it's good if you know this. Right? So that's how this expression would look like. And then the third reason why uh, the gravitational field strength, the uh, diversion between the calculated and the actual gravitational field strength could be due to these planets themselves uh, themselves being in the field of other planets. Right? So those gravitational field strengths would then either add or subtract. Anyway, they do change the true value. So planets being in the field of other planets bodies or planets you can say right and the last possible reason could be this and we also talked about this when we were talking about gravitational field strength and that graph which is the non-uniform distribution of mass so non-uniform distribution of mass within the planet right and the and the biggest example here is our own planet which is the earth right so i talked about this idea briefly that the earth is not made of uh, one single material right and it has different crusts and all of these also take up uh, slightly different volumes of the earth so the basic idea is this that if i write the formula for the gravitational field strength that's this a uh, small g is capital G m upon r square so if the distribution of mass is non-uniform that basically means that capital M the mass of the planet here this is going to change right that's what non-uniform means uh, non-uniform means not constant right so this mass is not constant so obviously if this uh, capital M is going to change this means that small g the gravitational field strength will then also change
right? So this is the basic idea and we just talked about these four uh, factors which could possibly alter the gravitational field strength of uh, a planet. And keep this one in mind because this one is very important. This one is assessed a lot in the papers as well. And in one of the videos after we actually talk about orbits, we'll be revisiting this example.